How do we map the filter? A filter can be mapped to a servlet or to any URI addressable resource within our application. Although filters were designed to be used with servlets, they can be used to filter any addressable web resource such as JSPs or even HTML files. To declare a filter mapping, it's declared in the WebXML using the filter mapping tag in the deployment descriptor of the WebXML. Filter mapping requires exactly um, contained within the filter mapping element a filter name element and either a servlet name if you're applying the filter to specifically servlets or if you're doing it to a group of servlets um, you use the URL pattern element. You're, you can't use them both. Um, URL pattern element is uh, w where we can use wildcards in URI addressable resources. The particular descriptor elements for configuring a filter are contained in the web deployment descriptor or the web XML. They must appear, the XML elements for configuring a servlet and its filters must appear in the following order, where you see the filter and then the filter mapping together in that order. Servlets and servlet mapping in that order. So when you're examining the web XML, Pay particular attention to uh, especially the filter and filter mapping uh, order of these elements within WebXML because that determines the order of filters that are applied to which servlet. Some of the most common reasons that customers consider using filters in their Java application. If they're trying to add attributes to the request, in other words, add data to the request, such as language preferences, rather than encoding this information as hidden fields on every web form or every HTML form in your application. If you want to add, change, or remove request or response headers, if you want to transform the response, for example, if the original response uh, is an XML document, the filter could replace the XML document with an HTML document by actually applying an XSL transformation. Or if you want to add a cookie. If on your site, if your site uses cookies to identify users, a filter before each response could allow you to ensure that your cookie is set. There are a couple of utility and handy uh, Java wrappers in working with filters. There is an object called the servlet request wrapper, and filters have access to this object if the filter logic needs to change the request in a way that would normally require overriding the methods of servlet request. Servlet response wrapper um, on the response does the same thing. So a filter could make use of the servlet response wrapper object to res replace the response or modify the response with another, such as in the case where we want to do an XML transformation using XSL. The wrappers follow the uh, industry standard decorator design pattern, allowing us to add behavior without modifying the actual source code. So we're adding decoration or we're adding um, uh, facilities to our application code without modifying the application source code. Let's take a look at creating an actual filter and applying it to a specific resource in Eclipse. So let's create a filter and apply it to our web application. Within our web application, I'm going to create a new filter. And this is going to go, again, in my filters package. And I'm going to give it a name of, let's say, client logger. The goal here is to log some information about every response, or sorry, every request within my application. So I'm not um, extending any superclass. Notice on the URL pattern, I want client information logged. And so I'm going to use the wizard here to change um, the URL pattern that will actually be written to WebXML instead of uh, changing it later, which is certainly possible and feasible. Um, you need to be able to manage WebXML. But I'm going to allow the wizard to do it here. So I'm going to add a URL mapping. Uh, URL pattern, and the pattern is uh, using a wildcard asterisk 
I'm going to make this uh, selection here. Choose OK. And I can remove the URL mapping for the filter referencing itself uh, by clicking Remove. So all of my configuration, or most of my configuration, that's necessary for the filter mapping and configuration is going to be handled by the wizard um, because I've actually gone in and done this work here. Double check that I'm implementing the right interface by clicking on the Next button and uh, Finish. And uh, now we're ready to write our client logger filter. I'm going to define a filter config class variable as a private variable at the top of the class. This is a key object that I'm going to use throughout my filter logic. So private filter config, oops, we'll call it f config so it's easier uh, to distinguish in reading my code uh, between the servlet config object and in this case the filter config object. Um, it just makes a little more sense to me in naming my variables. Okay. So I've got a filter config object. I've got a warning that it's never being read locally yet. Well, I got some more work to do, so I'm not uh, too worried about it. In the destroy method, I'm going to follow best practices. And in uh, the destroy method, I'm going to make sure that that local variable is reset to null so that the object, the instance, can be uh, flagged by the container for garbage collection. In my init method, I am handed an object called fconfig is a local variable. I want to uh, copy that to my class variable. So I'm going to use the this statement, this.fconfig, and it, and it sees that, yes, this has a variable available to it. And I'm going to copy it from the locally passed in to the init method um, instance called fconfig. Now, what is it that we want our filter to be able to do? Just as a sanity check, I'm going to compile my code, make sure I don't have any compile errors, so I do a control S. In the do filter method, okay, this is where the meat of my logic will go, or uh, the main uh, heavy lifting of my filter code will be. I'm going to create a final object of type HTTP servlet. HTTP servlet request. And the name of that variable will be, um, in camel case or mixed case, HTTP request. And I'm going to assign the value as type HTTP. And it should be as I type, control space should begin to, sure enough, help me out um, so I don't have to type in all caps. And I should be able to, I'll keep typing. HTTP, actually it's lowercase. HTTP servlet, that's why the tool wasn't finding it for me. HTTP servlet request. So yes, Java's case sensitive, and you'll get assistance from the tooling. You'll get assistance with uh, your coding, but you got to know the direction you're going in. The tool can only help you so much, sort of like spell checks in that uh, respect. So I'm going to. Uh, create a local final called HTTP request, and I'm going to copy from the servlet request into this local request. From servlet context, I'm going to create a local context object and assign that value from my uh, filter config, fconfig dot get servlet context. And notice the tool is helping me as I'm typing uh, along here. Now, this is really interesting from the request. We can get some uh, request information. We can get some client information. And that's what we're most interested in logging in our uh, filter. Okay, So um, I'm going to ask for the user agent header from the HTTP request and then write that to my log. So final, let's say string, oops, browser name equals 
from the HTTP request object, HTTP request dot get, and the tool is helping me. Um, so I want to get a header, a specific uh, request header. In this case, try and get a user agent. And write that information out to the log. And what the tool did for me is put my closed quotes in, and I'm typing and not paying attention. And it's trying to quote, unquote, no pun intended, help me get it, quote, unquote, trying to help me. Close my quotes, and I keep typing it out of uh, habit. But, you know, we've got to resolve these uh, errors at some point. We've got to work with the tool at some point. Um, then I'm going to write that information out to the log. Context.log. And it's not giving me much help here because it doesn't really know what context is supposed to be because I haven't resolved um, my imports. Notice I've got an error message on servlet context. And so it doesn't really know what, it's supposed to, what the behavior of this context variable is supposed to be. So I will uh, make a quick uh, Control Shift O to resolve imports, and sure enough, things are fixed on servlet context. So I should be able to control space here, and I should be able to get log. Eh, it's, not, it's not that long. I don't have to uh, type that much. Log, right? And it's uh, it saying, oh, yeah, now I know what you're doing. Log. And um, I simply want to log a string, OK? And the string that I'm going to log is some static string, the client browser is quote plus tools helping me and it's hiding when I want to copy and paste and I'm going to do the browser name that was fun uh, do anything so let's do it again uh, let's do another one uh, but this time we're gonna copy and paste and do something else um, besides just browser name so let's get another one, another piece of information, and write it out to our log. I'm going to copy and paste from the right side of here. And instead of browser name, let's do um, IP address. Let's get the IP address um, from the client information. So we're going to ask for uh, not header information on the HTTP request. We're going to try and uh, execute get remote address, OK? And write that out to the log. The uh, IP address is IP address. And notice before I actually use this variable, there was a little yellow reminder that, hey, you're creating a variable here and you're never using it. Are you sure this is what you want to do? Yes, I do. I'm a highly technically trained professional. So I'm going to format my code so it's a little easier to read, right? Uh, clean it up so that people don't laugh at me because I have messed up uh, code. So uh, from source, I'm going to choose format, and my code is indented. If you imagine this is pages and pages of a piece of Java code, that's a quick and handy tool to use, especially when you're doing what I'm doing, which is kind of thinking and typing at the same time, and you're not really paying attention to formatting. Um, that's a quick way to do that sort of cosmetic fix to your code to make it a little easier to read. Now, what I want to see is, again, I'm going to double check my deployment descriptor for client logger filter. Double check that this is applied, my client logger filter is applied to um, every URL pattern. So when I'm testing filter code, I don't actually run the filter. What I do is I make a request on the server for any other resource that is mapped to be intercepted by this filter, what we just saw in the deployment descriptor. OK? So I've got a piece of servlet code here uh, for listing employees. It does very basic servlet work, iterating through a result set, doing a lookup uh, to the database. And this is what I want to execute. What do I expect to see? I expect to see the filter logic intercepting this servlet without touching, hands off. I'm not touching the source code for list employees, 
right? No touching. Um, but I'm not going to execute the filter code. What I execute is my Java code. And what I expect to see is the logic of that filter written out to the log. And then I expect to see my resource, the ultimate resource that I'm requesting. In this case, my uh, JSP that's called from my servlet code here. OK? So I'm going to run, actually, the servlet. The final call in the servlet is a uh, forward, if everything is working correctly, a forward to a particular JSP. Right click. And well, let me scroll up to the top. I always like to scroll up to the top before I run. Right click, run as, run on server. OK, so we see the uh, republish. Uh, JBoss is republishing our application because we made modifications to primarily to the web XML. So server starting up. We start with a clean, fresh server. And what we expect to see is a response. We expect to see the normal browser response from our uh, servlet and JSP. But we also expect to see additional behavior injected into our application, in this case to do some simple logging. And notice that the filters are still um, applied. There's another filter that's applied. And if we investigate the web XML, we'll find that, in fact, uh, there are two filters applied to the URL pattern slash asterisk using the wildcard. So any resource is intercepted, and this behavior is injected into the request for that particular resource. And we see, sure enough, in the um, log, we see the client browser is whatever the request uh, header was providing for user agent. And the IP address is, and it gives my IP address. I happen to be running this locally, so I'm not broadcasting my IP address. Uh, so that's what got returned using get remote address on the request object. So with some simple Java code, we created a filter. With some simple configuration, we injected the behavior or the features of that filter into our application by doing some uh, mapping in our deployment descriptor, making sure that we handle the filter element and the filter mapping element.